Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we are going to go ahead and add asynchronous validation for the email. So last time we were able to add one for the for the username, just so we can give a user response before they even submit the form. Now we want to be able to ensure that the emails are very, the email formats are correct and uh, the emails are not taken on, on our database. So this is going to be not a lot different from the one we did. So we are going to start out from our views. So we'll create another view to validate the email. So I'm going to create another view here. I'm going to call it email validation, email validation view. So this is going to look out for the email. So the check we are going to need to do is we are going to check if it's a, if it's a valid email format. So the way we're going to do that is, let me see, we are going to use this module called validate email. So if you don't have it, you can get it quickly. So ppm install validate email okay so as it installs we import it here so import validate email from validate email okay so once you have that we need to check if it's not valid and the way we check that is if not validate email of course we need to rename this to email then we need to pass it in so if it's not valid, then we are going to tell a user email error. So email error to say that email is invalid. I think it's better we say, yeah, that's fine. Email error, email is invalid. Then we need to check if it's the email is taken. So to do that, it's going to be the same flow. We use the filter. So email equals email. Then we check that exists. Then we can now send an email error. This can be email is taken. Sorry, email is in use. Please choose another one. The status codes are still the same. Then we need to send email valid. So email valid, true. Okay, so now that we have the view, so, oh, sorry, I even imported this wrong So this this should be from validate email, import validate email. Make sure it's, it's typed correctly. So validate email, import validate email. We know we have it. So once you have it there, you need to set up the URL for it. So in the urls.py, which is urls.py, it is right in authentication, url.py, then path. That's going to be the path. Then the, the view is going to be that as view. Then of course we need to give it a name. So validate email. So this should be imported. So make sure you're importing it from views. So this should be a comma, not a full stop. This should also be wrapped in SCRF exempt. CSRF exempt. Okay, so by the way, if if there is one, if you have if you ever need have need to to, to explicitly protect one, you can use X R F C S R F. So it's called C C S R F protect. <laughs> okay. So you're going to be using this one. If you ever have a need to make sure that one of your of your endpoints is explicitly protected. But that's that's done by default. Okay, so once we have that, now we can test it out. So if I run back my server, make sure it's up and running. Everything is running. So if I go to the postman. Now we are going to be hitting validate email. So we need to send it an email key. So once you send that, let's see. Once you send that, so we have an issue. Validate email. Let's see how we called it. It's validate email. Okay. So make sure it's that's typed out correctly. Then now when you make an, an API call, page not found. Okay, let's see. Validate email. Okay, it's called validate email. Oh, sorry guys, I I quite mistyped it. Sorry about that. You probably must have noticed it and be laughing at. Okay, anyway, so make sure it's called validate email, just so we can find it when you make a request. So if we do, you can see that the email is invalid, but if we pass out the uh, the email that's correct. Like test.com and then run it. You 
can see that email valid true so now let's go ahead and put this in use in the application so here we are going to start out by selecting this one of course so in our in our templates we go to register then template we gave it an id of email field so we need to select it so here we need to select it too so const it's called email field this will be equal to document query selector then by id we've done this before so once we have that now we can add a listener to it so here we can do add event listener so this is going to be a key app so when someone types there something then we are going to run a function so in here i'm going to copy out most of this stuff just so we can move a bit faster okay so i'm going to copy this out then we start from there okay so first thing we are going to do is pick out the value so this is going to be email okay so email okay so once we have the email now we can uh, make sure it is doesn't have a read by default then i'm going to put create another another div called email output email feedback it's going to be called email feedback area so email feedback area let's make sure we create it and then declare it on top so email feedback area this is going to be equal to document dot query selector we we'll select it by a class like that okay so once that's done we, of course we need to create it so in the in the template we need to come over here and then and then we are going to duplicate this so copy that make sure you have it down in right this is going to be let me get the real class we are using email feedback area this is where our errors will go and it's none but displayed none by default so we don't see it at the start so once we have that one set up now we can come over here we check if the email value is is greater than zero like a, a user has typed in something then we make an api call to our endpoint there to send our data so once we do we expect to get some data back then now we check if we have an email error so this should be a key that should be sent from the server so we need to check in our response so we have email error email error email valid which i think is now correct when we get an error we need to now go ahead and add this we need to go ahead and add this invalid class just so it can get a read to the email field then we are going to show the email the email feedback area with an error that we get from the server okay so i think that's it let's go ahead and test it out and see how it's working so once you reload oh we made a mistake we are losing out on something so just get back here and see what we did wrong so this div you can see it's opened but it's not closed so we need to close it okay that's one same thing here so this is closed good so now once we reload you can see that everything is back let's start with the username to see if everything is still working so once you type like if you type something with the alphanumeric characters the server gives us the error so when it comes to the email let's test it now when you put v so we have an error here you can see that e is not defined and the way we can fix that is when we look at our function we are not bringing it in so when key app is called it returns us the event that we can tap into so you bring it in like that let's reload and see so in the email let's test it again you can see that we get the error okay which is good so we get the error then let's use our correct one that's not correct because this is not a dot and now you can see there is no error here but we have a problem we are not displaying the the error so email is invalid down here we need to make sure it's being displayed in the output area correctly so the way we do that now is is we need to look at our feedback area which is uh, which is this one email feedback area and make sure we are setting it to block we are displaying it making sure it's visible then now we are adding the error from the server so reload it so the username put this it's called this is invalid email is invalid which is good 
and type a correct one then say dot com you can see that the error goes away and then here if we put a correct one you can see that the error goes away yeah so which is good which is what we want because sometimes you might want to show like a loading indicator you tell a user like okay we are checking the email and then when the return is, is complete then you can tell a user that it's correct so maybe to show you how that can work okay so to show a loading indicator i'm going to come here like where we have the username so here i'm going to put a p a paragraph then i'm going to give it a class the class is going to be text sm I want it to be quite green so success so this will show when like the, the username is, is is there okay so i'm going to give it i'm going to give it another class just so we can target it i'm going to call it like username success output okay so username success output okay I'm going to copy this in the register. I can declare it. So we select it by class because that's the class we gave it. Query selector by the class. Okay, so once that's there, then we can now we can now display it to so right here we can say username success output. We want to to tell you that, that we are checking the, the value so you can say text content equals let's say checking and now i'm going to use the the template literals just so we can append what we are checking so here you can add what we are checking which is now the the, the username var. actually i need to move this one down to the other function down here username var make sure it's here okay so we need to, to set it away when we get the response so here we can now say style display there should be small letters of course dot style dot display equals none so we hide it when everything is back so let's test again if you come to the app where is it and type let's reload just so the js can be updated if you type a you can see that the responses are actually instantaneous but that's because i'm on a, a fast internet fast connection but when i come to to the, the internet and then i make it slow a bit if i do here where we have online you can put like slow 3g so once we reload this page so it's going to simulate when a user has like a, a low it's a low speed on the internet so you can see when you put like f you get checking f okay so for some reason we need to show it again like we need to show it again when we get the first response so here we need to display it block make sure that every time a user type something this is showing so this should be block okay so here reload on our slow internet if we type in ABC, it's checking ABC. When the response is back, it goes away. It's checking that, it shows the error, which is good. It's checking that, it shows the error. So this is all that we would want to do there. I'm going to just run down and do the same thing for the email, but I'm sure you guys can now use the same knowledge to do it. You can use the same knowledge we've used to do this and then you can implement it for you, for your own self. My battery is actually running out, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel just so you can keep in the loop and we keep learning more stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.